Good afternoon, and thank you for inviting us to Brown Prize Finals. Welcome to our presentation. The title of our presentation is Vision Energy, a visual concept for the global resource consumption. First, we're going to some impressions of our workflow. Okay, we'll start with a scenario. <laughs> we are confronted with a population growth, which means in near future there are really a lot of people on Earth <coughs> whose needs want to be satisfied. Through the globalization and the media, everybody dreams of the ideal life, and so needs are going to be created everywhere. Satisfying these needs means a higher consumption of resources and this causes ecological damage. Even right now we are using 1.2 times the resources of our globe. For example, in so, so that is only possible because we have energy stores in terms of crude oil, for example. But the problem is that they are all non-regenerative and our natural system won't be able to produce the energy surplus we need. So that is the starting point of our project. As we are designers, we are th working visually, transforming an invisible consumption of resources into a visual feedback. Through this visual feedback, we will raise public awareness and of the environment in every country. So our concept is aiming to saving resources to protect the ecosystem. We'll reach that through the visualization of water, electricity, transport, and fossil fuels. Our concept is dealing on two levels, the private household level and the society level. On the private household, we have um, an indication product which um, shows you your the day-to-day -day energy consumption and helping you to save energy at home. On the other hand, the society level, we have sculptures showing the energy consumption of the whole country. Through the visualization of the consumption process, we are hoping to increase the consciousness and sensibility for, all, for the energy problem. And for our concept, we invented a fictive organization, the IRO, International Resource Organization, and they give the energy saving values which should be reached by end of every year for all the countries. And now, Lena will explain the dynamic sculptures in society. Okay, welcome. I'm going to start with the transformation of our sculptures. And this transformation process is made by the abstraction of the pluming process in the combination with the untwist over helix. Our sculptures are all made of three columns built in polar array. And within that, all our sculptures, they're making a continuous movement. So we, within that movement, we design three, three example states. The first state is the state of less saving. There, the columns, the columns of the sculpture are entangled. The sculpture is close to the ground. It appears short and compact. The state two is the average, so the country already started to save some resources and the sculpture is gaining height and impressive appearance. It starts to unfold and untwist. The third stage is the reaching of the IRO saving energy saving value. So the single elements of the sculpture are completely untwisted and in the end they shave convex, so you have the association of the blooms of, a, of the leaves of a blossom. Technology. Um, our technology concept behind our, um, our sculptures is like that we're working with future materials. Those future materials are dynamic and active, so they can react, for example, to warmth and pressure and touch, and they can act like living skin. Um, 
our transformation is the overall movement of the transformation for every sculpture is the same, but there is a formal language difference between the single culture uh, sculpture for every resource, and I'm going to explain them now one by one. The water sculpture. We're going to show some films to get an impression where they are located in the city or in the public environment. The water sculpture has an amorph and fluid form. It's clear and transparent and glistening to mirror the liveliness of water. The fossil fuel sculpture. Here you, get, you see in 2D drawing of the three states again. It's placed in a consumer-oriented surrounding. The fossil fuel sculpture has uh, many layers because it's working with the association of an abstract coal, of the abstraction of a coal piece. So it has a jagged surface structure and those many layers. The transport sculpture. For the transport sculpture, we're working with the inspiration of automotive flaming surfaces. So we work with dynamic li lines and curves and dy mirroring those dynamic surfaces within the surfaces of the sculpture. The electricity sculpture. For the electricity sculpture, the most important formal aspect were linear elements, and they came from associations like uh, thunderbolt, cables, illumination, all what you associate with electricity. Now we're switching to the second level, the private household where we designed an indication product which shows your day-to-day -day energy consumption at home, our resource stones, and they should help you saving resources at home. Um, the tr transformation movement works different on the resource stones. So the first state is uh, the state of less consumption where there is a flat stone. Could you change? And the, the middle shape is a, the state of the average, so we have a middle shape. And for the last state, the state of much consumption, we have a fat stone. And there's a formal transition between the sculptures and the resource stones. So the transport resource stone is also working with flaming surfaces. The electricity stone also works with linear elements. The water stone is mirroring the liveliness of water and it's clear and transparent and has an amorph shaped surface. The fossil fuel stone has many layers and a jacked surface, like a coal piece. And then we have an additional piece, it's the display stone. It's giving you detailed information on all the other resources about your costs, where you save the most, uh, where you um, consuming the most energy and where you could save energy and where in the house this is happening. And then plus it's not changing its form. So if you see them all in, in your home, you can refer to the display stone and see where you're standing with all your other resources. So to come to the conclusion, we are aiming for saving resources to protect our ecosystem. We are doing this through the visualization of transport, water, fossil fuels and electricity. Our concept refers to the household and the society level, the resource stones and the dynamic sculptures. Altogether, the private household is a part of the society and saving energy at home has the effect on the dynamic sculptures in public space. So everybody is part of the whole system and can contribute with conscious behavior. And for the end, we have some more pictures. Thank you very much. Thanks for your attention.